All right, week 15, my NFL picks this week. Things are getting down to crunch time the last couple weeks of the season here. Lots of playoff seeding to be determined. A couple of the bottom end wildcard teams to be determined, at least where they're going to be seeded, even though a lot of it seems to be sorted out so far in the NFC, at least. Start things off with the Thursday nighter. New York Jets on the road in Baltimore. The Ravens are 16 point favorites. The Jets are 1 of 5 versus the spread, versus the spread, versus AFC. Head to head, the Jets are 2 and 6 against the spread versus Baltimore, 1 and 4 against the spread in Baltimore. The favorite is 6 and 2 against the spread in this series. The Ravens are 6 and 1 against the spread the last seven games following a win. I think the Ravens roll tonight. I think they get it done handily. I am picking them on this big spread. Baltimore, the 16. Lamar Jackson probably only played three quarters and still solidify that MVP he's going to win at the end of the season. Tampa Bay, minus three and a half point favorites on the road in Detroit. The road team is five and one against the spread in this series. Tampa is two and 10 against the spread in the last 12 verse though. Detroit has won and covered four of its last five first. Now, this is a tale of two different teams here. Tampa Bay uh, give up the most. Winston has the most giveaways than any other player in the NFL so far this year. But somehow he see, still seems to have a high QBR rating because he'll throw those three picks, maybe lose a fumble, but he's going to throw you three to five touchdown passes as well. He's racking up the yards per game, passing yards per game. I think Tampa Bay will do enough to get this done. I don't think Detroit will be able to do enough on offense to keep up with them. I could be wrong, but I'm going to roll with Tampa Bay on the road as three and a half point favorites. Philadelphia, four and a half point favorites in Washington. Uh... The Eagles have the third rank run D. They're four and one against the spread in against Washington. The favorite is five and one against the spread in the series. Five and zero oh straight up versus the Eagles over Washington in the last five. Uh, Washington's defense is 32nd in total yards per game, 32nd in passing yards allowed per game. Both of them defensive stats. The Eagles have an edge in just about every single category here but the key to me is you don't have the injured Alshon Jeffrey going out there anymore Aguilar or Alshon Jeffrey the snitch anyways so that's what they they are calling him in Philadelphia right now Aguilar still with the issues which means you get Jay Jaw the rookie and you get a little bit of Ward and the way Boston Scott ran in the second half against the Giants mainly the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter last week I think the Eagles will get it done against Washington cover that small spread because now they've got young players in there that are finally playing for jobs, playing for their future, and trying to win instead of running the lazy routes, dropping all the passes like Aguilar and the laziness of Jeffrey, but a lot of that could have been his injuries. Uh, Chicago Bears on the road at Green Bay. Packers are four-point home favorites. Chicago is 0-4 against the spread in their last four road games. Green Bay, though, they never really seem to run away from teams, and the Bears' defense is good enough to keep a lot of good teams closer to them. So I think the spread is a little high for me. I love Green Bay to win this game, but I think Chicago will cover the spread. This is more like a field goal at the end, and Aaron Rodgers is phenomenal at home. New England Patriots on the road, nine point favorites in Cincinnati. You had the videotaping scandal last week with the Patriots or whatever film crew it was representing the Patriots and their supposed eight minute video of the Bengals sideline focusing on their coaches, which, you know, all them coaches have their play cards or play sheets in their hand all the time. I, and I do camera for a living, so I know how close up you can get on some of that shit. So were they really filming their play calls, the, the different packages that run out onto the field, the different player substitutions, how they line up, how they set up, so many different things they could have been spying on there, and the Patriots, just the thing that gets me, people think that when somebody gets caught for doing something wrong, that that was their first time doing something wrong, no, it's their first time getting fucking caught, doesn't mean it's the only time they've done it, and they've got a history of it, Spygate, Deflategate, you name it, the Patriots and their long history of suspect suspicious ways of dealing with issues we'll say i do like the patriots to win this game uh tom brady has a passer rating under 108 straight games that's the longest of his career new england has scored less than 22 points in five straight games that's their worst 
point output in the Belichick era, which dates back to, I believe, 2000, 2001 or two. You guys can correct me if you want or look it up, whatever. I know it's something like that. I'm going to go with New England to win this game and cover the spread. I think they'll be able to figure it out. And Andy Dalton, I believe, is second lowest passer rating in the NFL this year, if I remember correctly. Houston on the road to face Tennessee. The home team is 6-0 and against the spread in the last six meetings. The favorite is 8-2 and in the last 10 head-to-head. Texans struggle versus the pass, and Tannehill is 6-1 and and putting up an average of 31.4 points per game as a starter for the Titans. Before Tannehill took over for Marietta, the Titans were averaging 16.3 points a game with Marcus under center. Tannehill, just phenomenal. Houston is 2-7 and seven in the last four weeks of the season, dating back to 2017. I love Tennessee. I think they're going to get it done. I think they're going to win that division. I will take them in the three points at home to win and cover. Seattle on the road to face Carolina. Carolina struggling. They're 3-12 and 12 in November and December. The last two years, Carolina's lost five straight games. Carolina is the worst run D in the entire NFC. Seattle has a 26th ranked defense overall, though. And Seattle is 3-2 and two straight up first since 2015. This is a matter of can Chris Carson go off against Carolina or can Christian McCaffrey get going against the Seahawks? How much will Russell Wilson need to do? I think the Seahawks will do enough to win this game. I think Wilson is a great quarterback, especially late in games or pressure situations. I love how he handles himself in those spots. I think Carolina will cover the spread, though, because I think McCaffrey will be able to do enough or Moore will be able to do enough for Carolina on offense to keep this game within six points. So Seattle to win, Carolina to cover. Denver Broncos on the road in Kansas City. Kansas City is 9.5 point home favorites. The road team is 4-0 against the spread verse. Denver is 7-3 against the spread last 10 games in Kansas City where this game will take place. Kansas City is 8-0 straight up and 7-1 against the spread verse in their last 8 games against each other. Uh, will Drew Locke be as aggr aggressive sorry, for the Broncos this week as he has in his first two starts? Two big wins, being a very aggressive quarterback. Patrick Mahomes was gripping the football all right after that scary hand injury. Uh, how hurt is he? Mahomes is 10-1 in his career against the AFC West divisional opponents. I think Kansas City definitely wins this game. I don't think they'll be able to pull away and run away by double digits. I will take Denver and the points. Kansas City to win the game. Miami Dolphins at the New York Giants. Well, wow. Saquon Barkley has yet to have 100 yards on the ground where did i write it down in eight straight games obviously the longest of his long young career having trouble talking today apparently new york giants they've lost nine straight miami has scored at least 20 plus points in the last four games they only did it two times in the first nine games new york giants are six and two straight up all time versus miami now that only dates back to 1972 or 73 i believe I could be wrong on that, but the Dolphins at least seem to be playing for their coach, especially for Flores. He's running aggressive. He's, he's doing all sorts of trick plays. He's mixing and mashing everything together. I think the Dolphins will cover the spread, and I'd like them to actually go into New York and win this week after getting robbed last week against the Jets at the end of the game. I will take Miami to win and cover this week. Jacksonville Jags on the road in Oakland. The Oakland Raiders playing their last game in Oakland. It's their last home game of the year. And then they're moving to Las Vegas next year. Derek Carr is 5-2 at home this year. Jacksonville has lost five in a row by 17 points or more. I, I am all over Oakland this week. I, I don't care. I, I, there's so many reasons the the black hole fans getting to celebrate one last time before the team moves on them Derek Carr's home record the Jags are a mess right now Gardner Minshew Nick Foles have both been terrible lately for them doesn't matter who they roll out there I'll take the Raiders by a touchdown in this one Cleveland Browns on the road against the Arizona Cleveland is three point favorites the faves are four and one against the spread in this series Revenge game for Freddie Kitchen and Steve Wilkes. 
Uh, maybe they both were with the Cardinals last year as coordinators. Arizona, the only team in the NFC to allow 20 plus points in every single game this year. I will take Cleveland and three points on the road to take it home with the win and the cover. Minnesota Vikings at LA Chargers. Vikings are two and a half point road favorites. Uh, a couple players that are questionable will be playing a little bit hurt. Delvin Cook, Adam Thielen, how healthy are they? Minnesota's only three and four on the road this year. Pass rush could be problems. The Chargers have yet to give up 28 points all season. And will Bosa and the boys be able to apply enough pressure on Kirk Cousins and hold them off? This is the time of year where the Chargers seem to play spoiler. Make you think they're going to get into the playoffs. Just sneak in as a wild card or just miss out. I think they play spoiler once again this year and win this game outright. Which means they will cover as they are underdogs. Atlanta Falcons at the San Francisco 49ers. Julio Jones, zero receiving TDs in nine straight games. Never had that happen to him in his career before. Kyle Shanahan faces his former team. And the 49ers passing defense allowing only 150.8 yards this year. It is the best their pass defense has been since 1977 when they allowed 113.4 yards per game. I think San Fran takes this game, runs away with it, and covers the double-digit spread. LA Rams on the road to face Dallas. The Rams are one-point favorites. The favorites are 4-1 and one against the spread. Head-to-head, -head, Gurley has 174 yards on the ground in his last two games. The boys struggle against run D against good run defenses. Oh, and they struggle versus the run. Oh, Ezekiel Elliott, where did I read? A little stat down about, no, I didn't. The Rams are only allowing 15.4 points per game since the trade for Jalen Ramsey, which could bold well for them in this game. Dallas is 0-6 versus winning teams this year. Prescott is 0-4 versus top 10 defenses this year. I think the Rams win this game handily. I like them to win and cover. Buffalo Bills on the road. Pittsburgh Steelers. This is the hardest game of the week for me. Buffalo is only 1-5 against the spread versus Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, the job Mike Tomlin has done this year is absolutely phenomenal. I would almost... I, I can't think of a coach where it, it's got to be him or Tennessee. Like... Coach of the year, the job he has done with the injuries and the the outside distractions that surrounded the team the last couple years from Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Roethlisberger getting hurt, the <clears throat> big fight and battle with, with Cleveland. Like the, the thing the Steelers have gone through this year has impressed me so fucking much that I don't. I think Buffalo is the better team this year. I think Buffalo should win. The Singletary and Gore, the way they're playing, absolutely phenomenal. This game's a toss-up to me. I will take the points with Buffalo, and I will take them to win. But really, to me, this game is a total flip of the coin. So I'm just going to roll the dice, and I pick Buffalo just because. There is no real logic for this one. The only real juicy stat is Buffalo's 1-5 against spread burst. So if you want to take that into consideration and roll with Pittsburgh, it could be wise too. They are the home team, small points. So I am going with Buffalo plus two. Final game of the week, Indianapolis at New Orleans. The Saints are eight and a half point favorites. The Saints are 0-4 against spread in their last four December games. New Orleans, 43 games in a row without losing back-to-back. -back. That's the longest streak in the NFL under that. And New Orleans, another stat that leads the league. They have yet, they have, haven't allowed a 100-yard rusher in 35 straight games. But on the flip side, Alvin Kamara, zero TDs in eight straight games. Something's got to give in this one. New Orleans is the better team. Indianapolis is a good team. They should do enough to cover this spread. New Orleans should win this game by between four and seven points. So Indy covers, New Orleans wins. That's my week 15 picks. Don't forget, all my stats and info comes from, well, not all my point spread numbers come from Bet365. That's the site I use to gamble. Gamble smart if you're going to. And remember, never bet more than 10% of your bankroll on any single bet, and you'll keep yourself out of a lot of trouble. Peace.